Amen. All right. The part of the chapter I want to focus on is verse number 17. 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse number 17 reads, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. The title of the sermon this evening is A Fresh Start. A Fresh Start. Start. I'm going to be preaching about the subject of starting over, starting things over, things being made new, having a new beginning, resetting and going back. I want you to turn with me to John chapter number three, John chapter number three. Now, Christianity is founded upon this idea. This idea is incorporated in basically every aspect of Christianity in some way or another. Now, there are different elements to this, the element of forgiveness, the element of being restored, all different types of things that we could go, you know, angles that we could go at this, but it's a very strong uh, uh, theme, if you will, throughout the Bible and especially the New Testament. Look with me at John chapter number three, verse number five. The Bible says, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Verse number six. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And he says, marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. So even the very concept of salvation, even the idea of being born again means that something has to happen another time. I mean, you've started your life, you were born of the flesh, you lived your life, obviously we've sinned, we've failed, and then you know what you need? You need a fresh start. He, he believes, or God you know, knows, would be a better way to word it, God knows that we need to start over. God knows that we need a new beginning. Ephesians chapter number 4, verse number 21 says this, If so be that ye have heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt, according to the deceitful lust. And then it says this, And be renewed... And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So even when it comes to the concept of going to heaven, even when it comes to the concept of salvation, the Bible teaches that we must have a new birth. The Bible teaches that we, it, is, it is necessary. We must have a new birth. You must be born a second time. What that means is you need a fresh start. You need to start over. You had your first birth, but that wasn't good enough. So you must start over. You need a new beginning. You need to be made new. A fresh start is what's necessary. At salvation, what takes place is all of our sins are cleansed. All of our errors, all of our mistakes, all of our problems, all of our guilt, everything is just taken away. All of that is cleansed. And then what we start with is a fresh beginning. A completely new start or a new Beginning, Zechariah chapter number three, verse number one, we see salvation played out perfectly here with Joshua the priest, and it says this, and he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, the Lord rebuke thee, O Satan, even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Then verse number three. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. And I said, let them set a fair miter, it's like a crown, upon his head. So they set a fair miter upon his head and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord stood by. So that is exactly what takes place at the moment of salvation. At the moment when a person puts their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, they trust Jesus to take away all their sins. You know what he does is he takes away all of your filthy garments. He takes away all of your burdens, all of your problems, all of your errors. He takes away the old man, the former life. And you know what he gives you? He gives you a new set of clothes. He gives you a new beginning. He gives you a new life and he gives you the Holy Spirit and he gives you a new man. The Bible teaches that he gives us a new heart and he gives you a new beginning. That's what that symbolizes. It looks 
It, it, what it is, is it's, a, it's supposed to, to uh, uh, help you to visualize the fresh start that you are given in salvation. I want you to turn with me to Exodus chapter number 32. Exodus chapter number 32. That's what happens at salvation is you're given a fresh start. You're made new. You know, we're sinful creatures. So we're, 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 you know, we're sinning in our life and we know that we need to, you know, have that new beginning. We need that, that new or fresh start in our life. So we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and he cleanses us from all of our sin. And he makes us a new creature. Exodus chapter number 32. I want to show you that this is, uh, it's not only applicable to salvation, but it's applicable in all areas of our life. Look at Exodus chapter number 32. I'll give you another great example with Noah. Noah's flood. What's the purpose of it? If I were to ask you why did God flood the earth with Noah, what's the reason? Start over. We need a new beginning. Obviously, it's because sin, right? And that's always the problem why we need a new start or we need a new beginning. But you know what? If I were to say, hey, what was God trying to do with the flood? The overall purpose. What's the overall purpose of the flood? It's to start over. That was the reason. Needed a fresh start upon the earth. We see that God operates this way. We'll see it again in Exodus chapter number 32. Look at verse number 10. We see Israel uh, uh, in, in great sin. Look at verse number 10. It says this, Now therefore let them alone. This is God speaking to Moses. Actually, back up to verse 9. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now, therefore, let me alone that my wrath may wax hot against them and that I may consume them and I will make of thee a great nation. Verse 11, and Moses besought the Lord his God and said, Lord, why doth thy wrath wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty Hand. So what God is suggesting here is to exterminate virtually all of Israel. He wants to just get rid of almost all of Israel. You know what he wants to do? He just wants to have a fresh start with just Moses. That's what he's suggesting. And obviously, God interacts and, and, and speaks with, with, with man and communicates back and forth with man for man's benefit as well. But what he's suggesting to Moses is that, hey, I'm getting sick and tired of these people. You know what I'm about to do? I'm about to start over. I'm about to just kill every last one of them. And then you know what I'm going to do? The same concept that he did with Noah's flood is I'm going to begin fresh with just you. I'm going to start fresh with just you. So we can see that God does this and, and believes that this is the solution in a lot of different areas. Salvation. He did it with the earth you know, as a whole in general with mankind. We also see him doing it with the nation of Israel here. I want to show you this in, in individuals' lives. I want you to turn with me to Genesis chapter number 17. Genesis chapter number 17. God will do this and, and try to give people a, a new beginning, a fresh start within the idea of Christianity, within the idea of salvation, but also just in your life after you're saved. Look at uh, Genesis chapter number 17, verse number 3. God does this very often. A way that he'll, he'll try to give somebody a fresh start is he gives them a new name. Now, let me ask you this. Does it benefit God when he gives people new names? Does that help him any? Is God, you know, is God gaining out of that or is God, you know, uh, uh, getting an, you know, an advantage? Of course not. You know, you know who, it, who it benefits is the person that receives the new name. It's good for them to have that fresh start or that new beginning. I want you to look with me at Genesis chapter number 17, verse number 3. It says, And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee. And thou shalt be a father of many nations. And then he says, Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. So notice that God changes Abram's name. God gives Abram the new name, and the new name is Abraham. And God has a purpose for Abraham. He has a job and a work and a way that he's going to use Abraham, and when he's, he's beginning this, he makes this covenant with him for this work. He changes his name, and he tells him, hey, you're no longer going to be known by Abram. Now, what does that do for, for Abraham? You know what it does? Is it gives him a new beginning. It gives him a fresh start. It, gives him a, it's a, it, it becomes a new chapter of his life and where he's able to start over and to put the problems behind him, to put the things of the past behind him, to put the old man behind him. And he's able to walk in newness 
of life. Now, God does this very often. So you can see that God operates with fresh starts in a lot of different areas of life. We see this happening many times. It's not only Abram. We see many people. We see Saul, whose name is changed to Paul. Obviously, Abram to Abraham, Jacob to Israel, Sarai to Sarah, Peter to Simon. And I'm sure that you can think of more people where God has changed their name. Why does God do this? Because it's important to have fresh starts. It's important at times to kind of reset the clock, to kind of, you know, reset your mind and to have a new beginning and to forget the things that are behind you and to start over and to just start moving forward from there. I want you to turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter number 10. 1 Samuel chapter number 10. <clears throat> We're going to see where God gives King Saul a new heart, it says. A new heart. <clears throat> Look at uh, 1 Samuel chapter number 10, verse number 9. It says, And it was so that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, God gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass that day. Very similar thing happens to us in salvation. We can see this the covenant of the promise of the New Testament that's given in the Old Testament in the book of Ezekiel. Turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 36. I'm going to read to you from Ezekiel chapter number 11, verse number 19. Ezekiel chapter number 11, verse number 19. The Bible reads, And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh and will give them an heart of flesh. Look there at Ezekiel chapter number 36, verse number 26. Ezekiel chapter number 36, verse number 26, the Bible reads, A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. Flesh. So what is the purpose of that new heart? Well, we know that that new heart or that new spirit is the Holy Spirit. That's what's given to us at the moment that we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And throughout the New Testament, especially in the writings of Paul and you know, Peter as well, we have these admonitions that are given to us to walk in the spirit, walk after the new man, walk after the new heart that's been given unto us and not after the old man. Not after the former lust, not after the life of our past and the things that are behind us, but we should have a new start and a new beginning. And at that moment of salvation, we're given the new heart and God desires for us to walk in newness of life. He wants us to, that is his way of giving us a fresh start. That is his way of us starting over and moving forward for the, the profitability for our own lives. Look at Luke chapter number 22. Let me have you turn to Luke chapter number 22. So this doesn't only apply to salvation, as I said. Just in general, God desires to give us a new start, a fresh start in many areas of our life. Sometimes, you know, in our Christian life, and I did this in my, personally in my Christian life, this was my testimony. You know, I was saved at the age of 12. I remember the day of my salvation as clear as yesterday. I remember all the thoughts that were going through my mind. I remember understanding you know, for the first time, like, hey, he's talking to me when he's talking about, you know, people that need to put their faith in Christ and that you're a sinner. And all these concepts, I remember applying them to myself for the first time. I remember the moment when I called upon the name of the Lord. I even remember the joy while I was riding, you know, in the van with the person that I had ridden with to this, this youth revival. I remember the joy and some of the thoughts that were going through my mind on the way home in my salvation. And I was happy to be saved. I just remember thinking about it. I was happy that I knew for sure I had the assurance of salvation and I knew I was going to heaven. I remember that very clearly. I was 12 years old. But, you know, I didn't change my life. You know, I didn't at that point begin walking in the newness of, of life. I didn't begin walking in the newness of spirit. You know, what I did was I, I actually, you know, if you were to look at my life as a whole, right at that time, you know, I entered my teenage years. I was 12, you know, right after that, literally a couple of months after that, I, got, I turned uh, uh, 13 years old. I was put into a public school, I had a lot of bad influences, and I went down a bad path that I'm very ashamed of today and did things that I wish I never would have done, said things, all different types of stuff of my former life in that sense, that it, walking in the flesh that I'm very, very ashamed of. You know, at the age of 21 is when I decided, hey, I'm going to start serving God. I'm going to start going to church. I'm going to start reading my Bible. I want to please God with my life. I want to do something that is worthwhile. You know, I was saved all along. 
I was saved when I was 12 years old. If you had asked me in the midst of, you know, 15, 16, 17 years old, you know, where are you going when you die? I would have told you 100% where I was going, and I was, you know, just as confident as I am today. I would, I would have told you with complete assurance, if I die, I'm going to heaven. Because I've, I have called upon the name of the Lord, and I'm saved. I know that I put my faith in Christ. I would have told you that. But you know what? I didn't change my life right away. But I'm glad that I still had that second chance to start actually walking in the Spirit. Not only to be given salvation, but I was also given the opportunity after I had gotten saved and was given the Holy Spirit, I had made some really bad decisions. I had made some really bad choices in my life and in my Christianity. But you know what? I'm thankful that God gave me a second chance. That God gave me the opportunity for a fresh start where I could reset the dial. I could reset you know, uh, 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 you know, the, the life that I was living and just start over. You know, the same thing happened for Simon Peter. Simon Peter sinned grievously against the Lord. He's a perfect example of this. But you know what? Even after his salvation, after he was a disciple of Christ, he made a major mistake. Major mistake. Very bad. You know what? God gave him another chance to, to have a fresh start. To, like the Bible says, to be converted. To come back. To start over and to start serving God again. Look at Luke chapter number 22, verse number 31. It says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Verse number 32. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And then he says, And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. So there even Jesus Christ prophesies of the fact that he will fall. You know, that's obviously implicit in his statement. He will fall to Satan's devices, at least, you know, temporarily, but then afterwards he will repent of that or he will be converted from that. He's given a second chance is what's happening there. He's given a fresh start. God makes things new all the time. God makes us a new creature. When we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, our, our spirit, our soul is renewed. And we're given the Holy Spirit. We're cleansed and made righteous in the inward man. He gives us a new body at the resurrection, a glorified body. And this body, of course, you know, is changed. He made a new covenant. Think about that. He made a new covenant with Israel. And when he did that, he totally reformed Israel. He cast out the physical Israel. And he, at least, you know, those that did not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, to be careful with my words, he cast those out and broke those off and cast those, those away. And he reformed that covenant where the only Israel are those that put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a major change that he made. You know what he did? He made something new. A new covenant. It changed very much so. And then he, he's going to make a new Jerusalem. He's going to reform. And he's going to have a fresh start with Jerusalem. He's going to make a new heaven, and he's going to make a new earth. It says in Revelation 25, or 21, I'm sorry, Revelation chapter 21, verse 5, And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. So he says his words are true and faithful. And what does he say? He said, I make all things new. Notice how he's a God of making things new. He's a God of fresh starts. Why does he have to make things new? Because there's problems, because there's sin, because there's error. You know what he does is he reforms it and he gives a fresh start or a new beginning unto it. So this is a strong principle about, about uh, uh, you know, God's character, the opportunities that God gives to mankind. And this is a principle that carries throughout all areas of life. It's something that we need to apply to all areas of life. We can see it in salvation. We can see this uh, in our daily lives. We can see this in our individual Christianity. We can see this in many different ways. These are some of the areas, just to reiterate, some of the areas where we will need and where it's necessary to have a fresh start. Number one, obviously, is salvation. Now, you only need to be born again. So let me clarify this. You don't need to be, have a continual fresh start over and over again. It's only one fresh start. You put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and you're born again. You're not born again and again and again. One time. Salvation is a one-time event. You're given eternal life and 
Obviously, once you have eternal life, because it's eternal, you don't need to get eternal life again. That wouldn't make any sense at all. So you get it one time, you have it, and you are saved forever. So you know what you need, though? You need to be born again. You need to be born of the Spirit. The flesh wasn't good enough. We need to start over. We need a fresh start, a new start with salvation. Not only that, our Christian life. Everyone in their Christian life at times needs a fresh start. Everyone. Now, this is the, the concept that, that David talks about in the book of Psalms. Psalms, revive us again. That song comes from the statement that's found in the book of Psalms, and he says, revive us again. He's talking about revival. He's talking about, you know, the concept of, you know, once you lose your passion in your Christian life, regaining your zeal. You regain your zeal. You know, and, and a big part of what comes along with, you know, uh, uh, having these fresh starts is Rede a rededication in your own mind to the things of God. A rededication to church. A rededication to reading your Bible. A rededication to prayer. A rededication to walking in the principles of the Spirit and the things that of God. So you, a, a big part of that would be you making that choice, you making that decision and rededicating yourself to this new beginning. That's very important. In our Christian lives, another thing is relationship, primarily with brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, what do you need? You know what you need sometimes with a, a brother and sister in Christ? You need a fresh start. That's what you need. A lot of times what you need when, when things go south, because they always will in all cases, because we're all sinners, things will always have their quirks and have their problems. And you know what you need to do? Sometimes you just need a fresh start. You need a new beginning. You need to start over. Like I said, the, the dial needs to be reset. You need to just, just start it over. You need to take it and just flip it over and completely start over again. You know, sometimes that's what needs to take place. Now, how does that happen? And this, and this you know, goes for uh, uh, all, pretty much all cases, if you want to uh, even apply this, if you'd like, to your relationship with God. Because, like I said, when your Christianity begins to lose its zeal, that obviously reflects your relationship with God. So it has to do with a relationship in that sense, too. You know what you need to do is you need to find out where you're wrong. And then you need to go and you need to repent of that to the Lord or repent of that to that person, that brother and sister in Christ. You need to right those wrongs. Say your apologies. You need to ask for forgiveness. And you need to forgive. And then from that point, you need to have a fresh start. That is how you have an appropriate, fresh start. You know what you're doing is you're forgetting those things which are behind. And then you're moving forward. You're moving on. That's the same idea. It's the same concept of fresh starts. You know what it does? It frees you from a guilty conscience. That's what it does. A lot of times, one of the main things why we need a fresh start, and I experience this in my life all the time, is because when we mess things up over and over and over again, when we make errors over and over and over again in our life, we get to this point where we become frustrated because we just have all of this clutter, just guilt in our mind. All these problems in our mind. And in whether you, you can apply it to anything. Even like when I, if you're working on projects and things, I'll you know, uh, 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 experience this in my life. Where you're just like, man, I just need to mentally restart my mind. You know, get away from this for a, a short period of time and then start over and come back to it. Even just that mental reset. Just hitting that mental reset button will help you to regain clarity. It's even good for your mental health is what I'm getting at to occasionally have a restart button. That's good for you to rejuvenate yourself, to, 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 to understand, hey, I'm starting over right now. Just to forget about the things which were in the past. That's my point. Forgetting about the problems that you made. You know, sometimes I'll find myself, you know, uh, I don't do it near as much, but I would find myself staying up super late working on a project where I just get obsessed trying to fix something, trying to finish something, and I'll stay up extremely late. You know what happens a lot of times is, you, you know, you get tired, and then the next thing that follows is you get frustrated. And then the next thing that follows that is you start making more errors and more mistakes and whatever you're doing, whether this is working, you know, physical labor, maybe like we stayed up late doing this, or whether it's doing like more mental work where you're maybe writing a sermon, you're preparing something, and you find yourself just becoming very frazzled and frustrated, and it's just getting worse and worse, and things are just spiraling out of control. Do you know what you really need in that case? A lot of people have given you this advice throughout, throughout your life, this advice, and it's a biblical concept is you need to just kind of 
Just put everything behind you, go to bed, wake up, and have a fresh start in the morning. That is a biblical concept. You need to just get it out of your mind, get it out of your, your head, stop concerning yourself about it, stop worrying about it, and, you know, and then just have a fresh start in the morning. So even to clear your thoughts, even to be more efficient in your life, even just to have a more positive outlook on what you are, are trying to achieve, whatever it may be, it's good for you just to have a fresh start and just to hit that reset button. Why, is it, why are we even able? What makes us capable of even being able to do this? And you know what it comes down to is forgiveness from God. You know, God being a forgiving God is what even enables us, or, or, or he is the one that permits us to be, able to be able to even have this opportunity to just have all these op new chances, hitting a fresh start, you know, or hitting a reset button and having a fresh start. Now, I want to give you a couple of quick tips real quick, and then I got two last verses or three last verses I'm going to read to you. I want to give you a couple of quick tips to be careful, careful about or to look out for, make sure that you avoid these things when starting, to, starting fresh or starting over. Number one is when you do this, don't run from your problems. You know, this should not be a way to run from your problems. This should not be a way to just try to, you know, not face your problems. You say, hey, I'm starting over fresh. Sometimes when people say that, that's because what, they're, what they mean by that is just, I don't want to face my problem. Okay? I don't want to face the issue that I have, so I'm just going to go somewhere else and start over fresh. Well, that's not a biblical starting over. That's not handling things. You know, the Bible teaches that you need to, you need to uh, uh, take accountability and stand up for yourself and, 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 and you need to, you know, right your own wrongs. You need to be a person that takes accountability and if you personally have wronged someone, you need to go to that person and make it right with that person. So it's not a biblical concept to just kind of run from your problems. That's not a fresh start. That's not, a, that's not appropriate according to, you know, biblical uh, advice or biblical admonitions. That's not consistent with, with uh, scripture. So you need to, at the very least, do your due diligence to try to make everything right when moving on. Another thing that people do in, in, is they will lie about the things of their past. Don't, and, and you know, they won't only lie to other people, they'll lie to themselves about how something went down, how something has happened. Sometimes people, what they'll do is they'll move to like a new area. You know, this is obviously you've you know, seen movies about this, but you've heard about people wanting to, when they have major problems, at least I know of people that have done this, they've, they have major problems, they've moved to other areas just to kind of start fresh. You know, the reason is the same thing. It's to kind of run from their problems. It's basically because they don't want to face their problems. They don't want to man up and, and, and actually try to, to resolve the issues that they have. So this is a, a bad way of, of starting fresh. They'll, they'll, they'll lie about their, their history or their backstory of, you know, exactly where they came from. You know, in that case, what they're doing is, you know, they're not helping anything. They're just running from their issues. That's not a real, a real fresh start. You haven't started over at all. You know, one of the things that, that you can take away from that is this. You don't need to change your location. You don't need to change the people you're around. You don't need to change, you know, all of those types of things. Your job. That's not what needs to change. That's not, that's not how you get a fresh start. That's not the concept, biblically, of a fresh start. Now, if you have an issue, that's a totally separate problem. So that's not what it means to have a fresh start. You know, outside of ridding from sin, ridding yourself from sin, and getting rid of sin, you don't need to change other things. Obviously, you need to get the sin out of your life. So oftentimes what people do is, is I'm just going to get a fresh start. And what they, what they do is they just try to run from their sin or run from their problem instead of actually facing their problems and fixing the problem that's at hand. And, and then they end up not fixing anything. It's not truly, they're not truly getting a fresh start in that case. Um, the, the last point is this. Don't start fresh and then go back and do the same dumb things you did before. You know, that's a tip to, to those that are starting fresh or starting over. Don't have a fresh start and then just go back and do the same dumb things that you did in the past. Second Peter chapter number 2, verse number 22 says this, But it has happened unto them, according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in 
the mire. So if you realize in your life that, hey, this was causing me problems. I had issues in my Christianity. I had issues in this relationship. Take care of the problem. Get forgiveness. Apologize to the person if you're the one that's wrong. You know, uh, uh, rectify the, 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 the issue. Have that true, fresh start. But you know what? Moving forward, don't go back and make the same mistakes again. Don't go back and repeat the same errors or the same problems again after you have that fresh start. I want you to turn to the last passage, Ephesians chapter number 2, verse number 15. One of the great things about having a fresh start is that it comes with peace. It comes with peace. <clears throat> I'm going to read to you from Genesis chapter number 9, verse number 13. This is about Noah's flood. It says this, after they get off the ark, he says, I do set my bow in the cloud. And it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. He's talking about the rainbow being a sign. Verse 14, And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the bow shall be seen in the cloud, and I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. One of the, 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 the main uh, uh, you know, concepts that are conveyed you know, from the Holy Spirit to the reader when Noah and all of his sons are getting off of that ark and the flood is over is the, is the concept or the idea of peace. What is the sign of, of a, a worldwide peace? You know what it is? It's the olive branch, the dove that has the, the olive branch in its mouth, right? Where does that come from? It comes from the story of Noah. You know, another thing that just causes you to, 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 to think of things that are, which are peaceful. Do you know what it is? It's a rainbow in the cloud. The rainbow in the sky. Why is that? Because a fresh beginning, what it does is it brings peace. When you have that fresh start, you know what it does is it, it allows you to just start over and it gets rid of everything in your mind. It allows you to have this mental reset where everything's past. Now, you got to do it the right way. Get forgiveness. Apologize. You know, and this goes for your relationship with God as well. Fix that. But do you know what? When you, when, you, when you sit down and you know, hey, I have this fresh start. We're forgetting what took place in the past. We're moving forward. I have a second opportunity, a second chance. It's very similar to that same concept at the moment of salvation. You know what you get? You get a feeling of peace. I get to start over. Not worrying about, I'm forgetting those things which are behind. And now I'm going forward and everything will be peaceful. I want you to look with me at Ephesians chapter number 2, verse number 15. And we'll end here. Ephesians chapter number 2, verse number 15, speaking about the moment of salvation and what takes place, getting rid of the old man and bringing in the new, says this, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man. And then he says, so making peace. Now, I'm not going to continue to read the chapter, but it talks about peace before this. It talks about peace after this. It talks about the moment of salvation. It talks about, you know, uh, specifically this passage right here is talking about making peace between Gentile and Jew, bringing them together, making peace between them. You know, but one of the ways that we receive peace at the moment of salvation is because we get a fresh start. Because that old man has been done away with. The old man is in the past. The old man has been forgotten. You know what? And it's just that, that, that reset that we get in our minds where we're cleared of our guilt. We, 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 have, we have a clear conscience. We have just a blank slate in our minds. And then from this point forward, I'm, I am moving on and I'm forgetting everything from the past. And you know what? It's a good feeling to have just a fresh one. And, and sometimes in life, you know what we need is we need a fresh start many areas where this takes place. Like I said, salvation, you know, your own Christian walk. Sometimes you just need a fresh start. If you see that you're faltering in certain areas, stop and restart. You know, you know, uh, there's many different areas. Like I said, brothers and sisters in Christ. You know what sometimes people need? A fresh start. That's the point of reconciliation. And the good feeling afterwards that you receive when you know that everything's been put behind you. 
And that's what it is. It's actually a true new beginning. And the same thing, as I said, with any, any sort of relationship. Any sort of relationship. Sometimes in life, if, if look at where you're at in life. If you're being burdened down with things, if things are difficult and hard, you know what you need sometimes? A fresh start, a fresh beginning. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father God, we thank you so much for everything that you've done for us, dear Lord. We thank you for, the, for forgiveness. We thank you for your word. We thank you for... Uh, uh, just being a loving and merciful and graceful God, a God of, of second and third and fourth chances many times, and uh, that you are long-suffering. We, we ask you that you would uh, uh, please teach to us through the Holy Spirit uh, how to be patient, how to be long-suffering, how to be merciful to others. Help us to, to walk as Christ each day more and more, and uh, to not walk in the old man. Help us to be forgiving to others. Help us to... to uh, Acquire the skill to be able to reconcile our relationship with brothers and sisters in Christ, dear Lord. Help us, dear Lord, if we you know, are, are backsliding or having any kind of area of life in our Christianity where we are, are behind or lacking, that we would have a fresh start, that we would rededicate our minds, uh, just reset everything in our minds, and that we would start over with a new beginning and begin serving you tomorrow. We thank you for fresh starts. And in Jesus Christ's name, amen.